kids learn it too. This is a plant's life cycle brought to you by a seed. We'll learn about the distinct stages that any plant needs. Let's explore vascular plants or tracheophyta. Let's plant this seed of knowledge in which I will teach ya. What's a vascular plant? Well, it's any plant that contains vascular tissue, xylem, and flow of my chant. Let's look at the vascular tissue called xylem. Their tubes that act like straws pulling nutrients and water up from roots they run And the vascular tissue called phloem is this Thin tubes that transport the sugar sucrose produced by photosynthesis These vascular tissues are similar to your veins Transporting water, minerals, and sugars through your body, it's the same A seed's an embryonic plant enclosed in a protective outer shell There are three parts of the seed of which I'm about to tell There's the seed coat, the embryo or tiny plant, and the endosperm which is the food for the embryo I chant. The seed coat protects the seed from any physical harm you know, and from temperature change or water damage so it can grow. The seed coat also keeps the seed dormant like it's in a deep sleep, by not letting the embryo have access to water or air isn't that neat. When the seed coat senses it's in the right place to grow, like deep down in nutrient rich soil it lets the embryo know. The embryo is now ready to start to grow, this process is called germination in which I will show. When the seed coat lets some water through to the embryo, the embryo will feed off the endosperm until leaves start to grow. The embryo will keep drinking water until the seed coat does split and the first thing that sticks out is a root reaching down quite a bit. A seed always knows what is up and what is down so it can be sure to send its root system straight down through the ground. The roots keep moving down so Searching for more water and nutrients as shown They're sucked up through the xylem to feed the embryo so it can grow When the roots are deep enough a shoot breaks out the other side Reaching up through the rough dirt to send its new leaves towards the sky This new sprout doesn't need to feed off the endosperm anymore Because now it can create its own food from the sunlight I adore This process of creating food is called photosynthesis Watch a kids learning to video on the subject to learn more about this photosynthesis is a process of using sunlight to synthesize foods from the water in carbon dioxide this sugar food is called glucose and fructose which are both converted by the plant into a sugary sucrose the sucrose is the food that helps the plant grow and thrive which is transferred through the flow arm sap through the plant it does dive when a plant becomes in Adult plant, it wants to reproduce and create more baby plants with a seed or from fruits. First, a plant must pollinate. It's no enigma, bringing pollen grains from the male anther to the female stigma. The plant needs a pollinator like an animal or wind in order for the pollination and seed production to begin. When a pollen grain from the anther containing a nuclei reaches the stigma of a flower from the bee passing by, the nuclei runs down the style in the pollen tube till it reaches the ovule of the flower to the egg it pursues. A nuclei fuses with the ovule creating a new seed which will fall to the ground starting a new plant cycle and a tree. The goal of every plant and of every living thing is to create offspring for the next generation. Life's a beautiful thing. This is a plant's life cycle brought to you by a seed. We'll learn about the distinct stages that any plant needs. Let's explore vascular plants or tracheophyta. Let's plant the seed of knowledge in which I will teach ya. Did you know without oxygen you wouldn't survive in this world we live in? And did you know that all of the trees produce our oxygen? It's expelled from their leaves.
crisis occurs, it happens real fast. Did you know, without oxygen, you wouldn't survive in this world we live in? And did you know, that all of the trees produce our oxygen, it's expelled from their leaves? When plants are I am a cloud, I am condensed water, vapor around Microscopic particles in the atmosphere I am found I can dissipate or grow, or travel from here to there If you want to learn about me, listen well I share When the sun beats down on an ocean or a lake The sun's heat is so strong, the water evaporates Evaporations when water is heated to a high degree Which makes the surface turn to gassy water vapor you can see In a process called convection, the warm air rises high Bringing up with it water vapor that it lifts to the sky Up to the atmosphere where there is less pressure too When it gets high enough this warmer air it starts to cool Cooler air holds less water vapor than warmer air does This makes water vapor cling to minute particles above These particles are called cloud seeds or aerosols They're made from things like cars, fires, dust, or volcanoes When the water vapor clings to cloud seeds or aerosols Cloud droplets are formed, condensation's what it's called All the cloud droplets create what we all call clouds And if you understood that lesson then please take a bow I am a cloud, I am condensed water vapor around Microscopic particles in the atmosphere I am found I can dissipate or grow or travel from here to there If you want to learn about me, listen well I share When cloud droplets get too big, gravity's force pulls them down Which are the raindrops that fall on your head and onto the ground This process of cloud droplets that turn heavy and then fall Is called precipitation, it's the rain that pours on us all We all need clean rain for crops to grow and water to drink Next time rain pours down on you, you should really stop and think Where did this water come from around the earth I live on? And where will it go next when it evaporates till it's gone? The process of rain falling and evaporating again Is called the water cycle, it's a natural occurrence my friend So take care of the water and the air that we breathe So you can live a happy life and stay healthy and free I am a cloud, I am condensed water vapor around Microscopic particles in the atmosphere I am found I can dissipate or grow or travel from here to there If you want to learn about me, listen well I share I am a cloud, I am condensed water vapor around Microscopic particles in the atmosphere I am found 
I can dissipate or grow or travel from here to there. If you want to learn about me, listen while I share. Let's gain a high level of knowledge about the types of clouds that we know of now. We'll gain a high level of knowledge. There are high, middle, and low clouds in which I'm proud. There are three levels of clouds in which we will explore. High level, mid level, and low level, of course. The typical high level clouds, they are first. There are three we will learn within this song verse. Cirrus is a genus of atmospheric cloud, generally characterized by thin, wispy strands I teach out loud. A cirrus cloud can form at any altitude between 16,500 and 45,000 feet, it's true. Cirrocumulus clouds are small, rounded puffs that usually appear in long rows high in the sky, this much is clear. Cirrocumulus usually form between an altitude of 16,000 and 45,000 feet. This is so true. Cirrostratus is a high level, very thin, generally uniform, semi translucent type of cloud in high altitude it'll form. Moving on to mid level clouds, they usually form between 6,500 and 20,000 feet, is the norm. They typically form at temperatures between 0 and negative 40 Celsius. I hope that you know what I mean. Alto cumulus is the first mid level cloud. They appear like globular masses and layers or patches so proud. Alto stratus form between 6,500 and 20,000 feet, generally uniform gray to bluish green layer or sheet. Nimbo stratus is a multi-level, often dark, nearly uniform cloud, producing rain, snow, or sleet with no lightning or thunder pow. On to low-level clouds that usually form below 6,500 feet and there is more you should know. These consist of liquid water or even and super cool droplets, except during cold winter storms when ice crystals within the cloud set. Cumulus clouds have flat bases and are often described as puffy, cotton-like, and fluffy in appearance. That's so rad. Cumulonimbus is a dense, towering vertical cloud forming from water vapor carried by powerful upward air currents. I'm informing. Stratocumulus forms in large, dark, rounded masses, usually in groups, lines, or waves in the low-level cloud classes. Stratus clouds form with horizontal layering with the uniform base, as opposed to convective clouds that form by rising thermals that race. Here's three levels of clouds with each type in mass. Thank you for joining this kids learning tube class. Let's gain a high level of knowledge about the types of clouds that we know of now. We'll gain a high level of knowledge. There are high, middle, and low clouds in which I'm proud. Sleep versus snow versus hail. Let's look at what makes them different with this frozen tail. Sleep, snow, and hail are forms of frozen water precipitation, but each is distinct when it comes to its formation. Sleep consists of small ice pellets or frozen raindrops that fall That's where it's found. Sleep versus snow versus hail. Let's look at what makes them different with this frozen tail. Snow is a type of frozen water that forms when water vapor in the atmosphere condenses directly into ice crystals, I'm sure. These ice crystals then join together to form snowflakes. Each flake is a unique structure piling like icing on a cake. Hail are balls of ice that form within severe strong updrafts and this is how they are formed. These updrafts carry raindrops high into the cold upper regions of the storm where they freeze into ice then drop in warmer seasons. Sleep versus snow versus hail. Let's look at what makes them different with this frozen tail. Thanks for watching KLT. Please subscribe to this channel, like our videos, and check out the KLT merch store.